I'll try. Let's do that way. I'll try. Yeah. Valid. Okay. Well, then I, I will know. press the button. Okay. Button. Button. I have named it Benjamin. <laughs> Benjamin Button. <laughs> Just got that. <laughs> yep. Technically, that's actually my middle name. Oh. Crash Aaron Benjamin. Button Smith. <laughs> I, I'm i sorry, Crash, but the only thing I can think of is that you you need to really make Crash one of your middle names so that you can go ABC Smith. In college, we had this thing where, because uh, James T. Kirk, the T was for Tiberius. Uh-huh. So as we were introducing ourselves, we would use all of our names, but also put a T in there. <laughs> Paul James T. Gallo <laughs> was my roommate. And then, and then there's the author, T. Kingfisher, but the T stands for the, I'm told. I mean, that works. Mm -hmm. I have had a great uncle who, for an application, they needed a middle name. So they put an E. The E didn't stand for anything. <laughs> but they, they needed something to put there, so they just wrote the letter E, and then they went with it. What's your middle name? E. <laughs> is this where we get A? <laughs> what, what does it stand for? Anything. Does, isn't that spelled with an A? <sighs> uh, and you got A because I was expecting all the kobolds to die, so they were just labeled with letters of the alphabet. Oh, and well. the first kobold you encountered was the first letter. There you go. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And we kept I've, it. I carried that theme when naming the other kobolds in their clan, including the one that got away. Their name is also a letter that I've turned into a name. What was their, their letter? You'll have to check your notes. I'll have to re-listen because I have no notes because I'm brain. What is brain? Oh, I can relate. <laughs> or you can ask A. Oh, fair Which would require the GM to check his notes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've been recording for some time now. As yeah. soon as I said button. Hello and um, welcome to Pack Tactics Season 4, <laughs> Episode 19, <laughs> The Longest Cold Open. Uh, tonight's session is called Voluntobol. <laughs> because one good portmanteau deserves another. Oh my. <laughs> Tonight I'm joined by a bunch of awesome people, including Beth, Ellie, Eo, Jen. My name is Crash. I will be your GM for the evening. Okay, Eo. Oh, briefly joined by Eo. With with cameo special guest, Eo. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, the weather has decided that, like, the top half of my head needs to be um, composed of pressure instead of brain. Oh. And that is not so good for being a lawn cat. We need you to roll up a character that's like a barbarian with, <laughs> with all the points put into strength and dexterity for allergy days. IQ we six. Will, we will refer to this barbarian as the pollinator. <laughs> that's, that's oh, that might make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> so a bee person. A very angry bee person. Oh <laughs> you know. Their real name is Beatrice. <laughs> Their shield is a hexagon, which we all know is the best of gun. Unfortunately, I think that if I tried to make a character like that, they would somehow completely accidentally end up as the only one in the party with common sense and be elected party leader because oh, excuse me, hold on. Whenever I try to play characters that do not social and do not try to drive the plot this somehow only encourages them to like somehow accidentally drive the plot and then i'm going oh no oh no how did this happen we, we could apprentice this character to gox who would take them under his wing <laughs> literally Very big wings literally he has big wings it's very There's easy. a lot of kobolds under Gox's wings. Mm -hmm. Beacon! <laughs> oh. I was sipping my tea. <laughs> Ellie. <laughs> Gox would feed them beacon. Yes, it's a honey glaze. <laughs> it's 
spicy sky raisins. Do the not thing eat, with Gox. Yes. <laughs> they come back in. What? Do not eat the bees. They make the honey for you and get rid of the pollen. <laughs> they turn the pollen into something good. <laughs> Not trying to figure out what wasps. The harder I am trying to not end up somehow uh, taking an active role in pushing the plot places, the more likely I am to um, somehow end up pushing the plot places. (laughs) The, The first requirement in becoming team lead is to not want the job. (laughs) <laughs> which is partially why I'm department chair. Oh, no. Again. Oops. I changed schools to <laughs> get away from that. Well, not just Oops. to get away from that, but still. Considering some of the department chairs in the high school I went to, well, I am deeply sympathetic for your unwanted authority. The students are probably lucky to have you. Mm-hmm. Aww. <laughs> I'll remember that as I'm failing them for not handing in the work that was due four weeks ago. <laughs> yes. Nah, it's... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, most of my students are doing quite well, but never mind about that. Okay. So what happened almost a month ago? I don't remember. We met a couple of people of kobolds who are frankly okay, they they used to be normal kobolds for some value of normal at one point, but now I feel that they are just as much kobolds as Sori and Longkip. They are still culturally kobolds. Yes. At one point they were genetically kobolds. Yes. One of them still might have some kobold DNA. Along with everything else, which seems to mostly be plant matter. Yeah. The other one is, you could argue that they are still cobalt software, but they're currently running in some type of mainframe. Mm-hmm. They're, they're running in, in clockware. Yes. <laughs> so, they do not get to make any snide remarks about Sori not having her own tail. Thank you. If you don't have your own tail, store-bought is fine. It wasn't store-bought anyway. It was handmade by someone. It's it's bespoke. Uh I once had a conversation uh, with someone who, like, they they didn't do this full-time. It was a side gig. But, like, I've done some historical reenacting in the past. It's a lot of fun. And wagons get involved for that. But people don't mass-produce wagons. Any, okay, some people still do. The Amish are a heavy buyer of that, but it doesn't happen often. So if you are a historical reenactor and you have a wagon and the wheel breaks, where do you go to get a new one? Well, this person, as their side gig, was making their own wagons to match the aesthetic. Not the whole wagon, but making additional wagon wheels to match the aesthetic of whatever the rest of the wheels were like. So what I'm saying is we spoke about the spoke spokes. Oh. <laughs> and kudos to everyone who saw that coming. Oh. I, I did not. And, and did not get off the train. <laughs> All right. So, yes, you met two cultural kobolds. Uh, they are both of the Chipped Claw clan, um, of which some dear friends of ours are also members right. of the Chipped Claw clan. I don't remember that they were Chipped Claw. They, yeah. Okay. Uh, Bog and Cog... Chipped claw. Oh, right. Okay. Got it. Bog is the plant one. Cog is the steampunk one. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Gosh, I was a, I was ditzy as my character today. This is not going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> I assure you, everything will be fine. Okay. For a certain value of the word fine. <laughs> yeah. Probably. And I'm, I do need to read what EO has posted. <laughs> So I'm just going to, to make a note of this so I can come back to this because the, a certain name that I have heard mentioned before is included in this. And therefore, it has my attention. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful name that I will probably turn into an NPC villain at some point. <laughs> and once again, 
I'm going to leave in the part where I say that if I cut everything out from before it, it's going to be very confusing for the people who are listening. But I'm going to leave the part in where I say I cut something out. Okay. <laughs> moving right along. So moving right along. Um, log, no log. Well, no, there's some logs. Uh, there's also some tiny dragon hatchlings that seem to be covered in vines that are being controlled by Bog. So mm-hmm. they're minions. Somewhat vaguely undead-ish in composition. So that that's something that Longkip might be picking up on. They're not not a, oh, yes, I could definitely tell from this, this, and this. But that's the kind of vibe that, that's sort of coming off of them. And Cog Chipped Claw was very keen on learning that Cobots still exist somewhere. Because in this inner sphere of the planet... It just so happens that there are no more Cobots. So Cog and Bog thought they were gone completely from everywhere. Uh-uh. But Cog found a Cobot Forge, which can be used to make more Cobots, provided Except you have Cobots. But also there's dragon in it. But also there happens to be a dragon in it. See, there's some lava in the in the Cobot Forge, and it's a red dragon. So, of course, it was like, oh, lava, home sweet home. I'm going to set up a a loot pile over here, and maybe some throw rugs over here. The throw rugs are on fire. That's okay. I'll deal with that later. Uh, maybe some nice wall hangings. The wall hangings are also on fire. This fine. This is fine. I still like it here. <coughs> so, Bog is somewhat unsure as to whether or not attacking a red dragon in their lair is a good idea. Oh my gosh, that is a lot of text. Also. I appreciate the title of Sith Politics Pundit. (laughs) However, Cog is very interested in the whole idea and has somewhat insisted that you all go back, including Cog, to see the Cobots that you had just recently talked to to (laughs) see if they'll come and help out. But we also want to check the forge and see how, well, how much of a dragon there is, yeah. So the question is, which are you going to do first? Okay, I'm back. My bird is um, indecisive. <laughs> um, indecisive bird is the name of my next ska cover band. Yeah. <laughs> it won't actually be ska. We'll just cover ska songs, uh-huh. which are covers of other songs. <laughs> sure, why not? Which ones? We haven't decided yet. Nah. My inclination is to go get Cobots, because if okay. we clear out the forge and then go get Cobots and then come back with the Cobots, another dragon might have decided to move in in the meantime. There are a very large number of dragons. And you don't know their respawn rate. It's true. It's true. One dragon per egg, generally. (laughs) I am almost certain that Longkip has inspiration. Let me double check. (laughs) Yes, yes, Longkip does have inspiration, still. All right, so... When I do not suge- do this for the inspiration. I do this for the joy of making the DM laugh. Sorry. Fair and valid, and the DM gives inspiration for the joy of having been made to laugh. Uh, with that said, as soon as Dezos suggests, let's go get the Cobots first, Cog starts walking towards the mountain that you were previously on. Okay, I guess we will traipse along after. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a wipe, not a TPK, just, just a cinematic effect. I should specify. Yes. Like, we see Utashi's head spinning towards the camera, and then it spins back away again. (laughs) Because Utashi has the best icon. (laughs) Utashi's eyes are doing the little spiral anime thing the whole time. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Because Utashi's head is spinning, and Utashi Mm -hmm. is very dizzy. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) Uh, So, you're all back in the train car, and you're heading back the way you came because you can press buttons... And are we bringing Cog with us? Yes, it's a little okay. cramped mm-hmm. because Cog is quite big for a kobold. So they're yep. they're sitting there on a chair, and the chair next to them on both sides. Mm. Where Strapped I'm a- in securely. Oh, I'm sure. Just as I'm sure that for comedic for comedy's sake, there is probably at least one person sitting in the chair next to them. Yeah, um, we do have. T- do one little minor... Well, fortunately, we don't have to go all the way back. No, you're only Hello. going back to cohort 0512. Yeah. 
we're going to need to build a bridge so that we don't have to have our um, um, winged friend help us with the car. No, yeah, it's we, okay. We need... your, your winged friend who helped you with the car might have built a bridge all on their own. Let's hope. I mean, it's made up of loosely piled rocks, but you might be able to walk across it. <laughs> we need more cars. Oh, but well, we have Cindy. To... What? Do a sending. Oh. Send more. We need to send we more. We have sending. Right. Yeah, I heard the same thing Ellie did. So did I. <laughs> I'm that... not sure I heard. Okay. Sending. Send, send. Yes. Okay, okay, got it. Yes, you could send a sending. Uh, a sen- intended... sending could be sended. I had intended to ask the cobots to repair that bridge the last time we were at 512. I guess I forgot. I vaguely remember that it was brought up. So it's possible they know. But then they went and closed down again. Oh, right. You you sent it to the others. Yes. Right. You sent a sending already to. to... Yes. And, and after yes. after Sori got powerful enough to send sending, Utashi was just like, oh, that spell. Yeah, I've had that for a while now. <laughs> We could have called home how long ago? <laughs> I loved that moment. It was glorious. It was, it was chef's fun. kiss. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you're, you're on the tram riding at speed. There is, there's a few moments of awkward silence because you're not going to spend the entire time talking. And I'm spending at least four hours of it inside my extra dimensional space transcribing things. <laughs> And Mori is fiddling with something. I'm going to go over and see what she's fiddling with. Looks like a pair of goggles. Hmm. What are those for? And she jumps. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. It's, um, you all see very well in the dark. Mm-hmm. For the most part. And... Mostly. And yeah. I don't... Mood. Oh, so you need goggles for that? Well, uh, there was some stuff that we shoved in here from the dragon's lair. Some of it was optics space, so oh. thought I'd tinker something together, and I think these will let me see in the dark. Hope so. She goes and puts them on and easy. immediately takes them off again. Yes! Yes, that makes everything very bright. A little too bright? Oh. I'll let you know when the spots are gone. Oh. Oh, no. And Good I, like, news. pat her shoulder, like, oh. <laughs> Good yeah. news is I will no longer be walking into walls in all these tunnels that have no light sources because they were built by lizards that see. see in the dark uh-huh. and their robot companions. Uh-huh. We call them cobots. Yes, I know. Oh, did I say it already? Many we knew before. Did. Yeah. They said it already. Oh, and... I also made this thing. That was weird. Hmm? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Now we can. We hear that okay. was weird. Uh, Discord crashed. <laughs> oh. Ah. So you didn't miss much, just Maury making the goggles that let her see in the dark. Because Maury has leveled up. Maury is now a level two artificer. Ooh. Ooh. Sensible um, of her. I actually did hear that. I, I don't think there was a whole lot of discontinuity because it started again immediately. Wonderful. But... Hmm. So, yeah. So, um, Mari is not sorry. Mori is not taking any more levels in cleric. Uh, but as a level two artificer, Mori got the ability to make a magical item, and for that, Mori has decided it was going to be. Where is the exact name of this item? Goggles of Night. Oh, neat. Ooh. Yes. So that's what Mori has. Not a thing that Chroma ever made, but Chroma didn't need it. And Mori has also made what looks like a small handgun. Arm. Not that Sori knows what a sidearm is, but I do. So, y- you know healing potions. Mm-hmm. Huh? Well, a lot of the magic gets sort of wasted because you have to drink them. So, this is, um, it's hypodermic? What, what, what's a hy- hypodermic? I stab you with it and you get better. Oh, hypodermic, wow. it goes under the skin. Okay. So, it's like a reverse dagger. Yeah, I stab you and you heal instead of someone stabs me and I bleed. I mean, there's still a little blood too, but it heals almost instantly because that, that's kind of what it does. Oh, okay. Honestly, fair. Which game mechanics wise is just Mari used the new spell slot she got as an artificer for cure wounds. 
because healing okay. word was the only healing spell she knew she knew and someone keeps poking holes in her cobalts <laughs> oh she got tired of it uh -huh. her terrible terrible friends who do in fact try to protect her as well more or less more or less we're terrible we really are and before long and by that i mean you did have time for a long rest again I, oh, which, oh, oh sorry <laughs> bird 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 randomly I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the long rest button right uh, you can. I don't think any spells have been used since the last time everyone hit the long rest button, but you can hit it again if you want. You hit it three or four just times if you want, just to be just to be safe. Because mm -hmm. you never know. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> Where is the long rest um, button? Oh, there it is. It's under hit dice. Under hit dice? Yep. Uh, in in Foundry, under your name, there's your, your oh, range actually, and, your, I see and it. then hit it's dice. It. Okay, I think I did it. Yes. Yes, okay. It says, cool. Utashi Chipped Claw takes a long rest. Alrighty. So, th last time it was a wipe, this time it's a dissolve. No, and I'm melting. <laughs> and <laughs> you are once again in front of 64. What a world, what a world. <laughs> I catch that reference. <laughs> All right, go on. While, while Deza was in her ring... Someone threw it into the heart of Mordor. <laughs> oh, <no>. This is not <laughs> what happened. No. We don't have three halflings. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you are once again in front of 64, whose name is a lot longer than 64, but I'm going to keep calling him 64 because I can't be bothered to say all the numbers. Plus, he doesn't remember all of his zeros. No, no. 64 is the admin. Oh, right. 64 the, does know all their numbers. Oh, thank goodness. Yes. The one you are thinking of. Right. Is the other one. Is the other one. <laughs> whose name is 0512-0000314. Pie. Actually, I prefer cake. I mean, I don't eat pie or cake, but you can stack cakes higher. A very logical criteria. I don't know They're why I'd stack them. The store. Well, Yeah. You know what? I'm going to say that is why I decided that. <laughs> 64 is not sapient, so 64 does not respond to what 314 is saying. Instead, they look at the rest of you and say, So you have located a Cobot Forge. Yep, and we just need a few of your harvesters and maybe a factory and perhaps... Uh, an artificer to get it up and running, and, and then everything will be fixed. Except for the fact that we have to clear out at least one dragon and then probably fight off others who want to come live in the forge because apparently it's got good ambiance. Well, I will say that when we were designed, the makers did have aesthetics in mind. Yes. The, the inner world has kind of a dragon problem. 64 turns to 314 and says, You will accompany them to restart the forge. Me? But I'm in charge of the maintenance here. Yes, you will activate another artificer and then accompany them to the forge. So we're sending two artificers? No, the other artificer will remain here in your stead. You Where's the go them? to the forge. Oh. With us. Oh. Why? So the forge can be reactivated. Also, you should probably take five protectors, just to be on the safe side. Okay, take them where? With us. 64 turns back to all of you and says, you may wish to keep an eye on them. Yeah. Okay, we can do that, mm -hmm. right? Cog uh -huh. salutes hard enough that there's a ping sound on their helmet. <laughs> oh my. They're going to get along just fine, hopefully. Either that or kill each other. No disassemble, no disassemble. I have forgotten the numeric de designation for the one who's coming with us. 314. 314. Three, okay. Wait. Say that again. One person, please. 314. 314. Okay. I heard I heard both 214 and 314. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and I wasn't sure which one. Their full <laughs> numerical designation has been included in the chat. Thank you. I asked 314 if they can read Dra Draconic. I am fluent in... Two major languages. Yes, but can you read them? Yes. 
Why wouldn't I? Some people can speak a language without being able to read it. That sounds silly. It does have its limitations. It, I write down the instructions and hand, him the, hand them the piece of paper. Oh, thanks. I will store this someplace safe. They eat it. That is exactly what I expected to happen. It's okay. I don't have a stomach. It's more like a, a letterbox. Ah, you're a translator. Oh. This is a joke that's going to make one person laugh. More like a transformer. Robots in disguise. <laughs> I turned AC no, into no. DC. The Gobots were a different franchise. <laughs> I said Cobots. I said Cobots. <laughs> and we all know that if 314 attempted a disguise, it would be a comically large taped on mustache. Yeah. Or maybe a wig. Oh, the wig would be an additional feature, yes. And a top hat and monocle. Concerned I am. Why? I say it. It's incredibly clever. No one would ever expect it. I can safely say no one would ever expect it. True. I sure hope that one of us actually remembered to take, like, create food or something. Um, it's okay. Yeah. Two of us don't eat. Mm-hmm. And that means that if, that if we start starving, we can't eat you either. And my brother's a botanist. Don't forget. Uh huh. Also botany. He's kind of both now. It's always good to know how one's own body works. That he does. Me? Uh, it's kind of a black box situation. Mm. 314 perks up and says, oh, I think I can help with that. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, wow. They get along together pretty good. So you see, the, this cog connects to that cog, and that cog connects to this axle, and this makes the whole arm come off. Oops, sorry. Can you put it back? Sure. Just need a few parts. Grab a few parts. Okay. So the you the parts that were already there not enough. Well, you don't want it to happen again, do you? True. If anyone could just come over and make the arm fall off, you kind of want to <laughs> avoid that. Yeah. How attached yeah. are you to your arm? Now or before? <laughs> How attached are you to making your arm move? Kind of need to. A little bit. All right, so you get a few crates of spare parts, and you are accompanied on your way back by an additional car. Otherwise, it would have been way too cramped. Thank goodness. But you are accompanied by five what are referred to as cobot protectors. Now, cobot protectors look like metal cobalts. Imagine, if you will, war-forged cobalts. Uh They don't have hands. They have sword blades attached to their wrists. How big are they? They're cobalt sized mm. They are, other than the artificers, they are the most cobaldy cobots you have encountered. I suppose this makes a great deal of sense because it means that they can maneuver f- properly in tunnels that are cobalt sized Okay. Yes. And they don't have any digging apparatus because they're expected to protect the inner portions of any cohort, which have theoretically already been dug out. So <laughs> they, they literally have one job. It's go stabby stabby. <clears throat> they are also not great conversationalists. They only get activated when there is a problem. So they've spent most of their time dormant, which means they haven't had time to become sapient. They can, however, follow simple orders and... Good news, you happen to have an artificer with you that speaks fluent cobalt, cobot, rather, and is therefore able to give them orders. I'm sure everything will be fine. Maybe 314 could talk to Mori and and let Mori also give artificer-style orders. This is an excellent plan until you realize that cobots communicate with each other with the tappy. With the tappy tappy. And you are not familiar with Mori enough to know her dance skills. <laughs> that yeah. would be a performance role. Uh. Actually, the DM will check. Uh, so, Charisma 14. Not bad. So, not not bad performance, but not proficient in performance. So, that is a higher charisma than I expected. Mori generally came off, comes off as being too tired for charisma roles. <laughs> well, just because yes. she's tired doesn't mean she doesn't have them. 
Maury can put on a happy face for a customer. Maury has not had a customer in quite some time because Maury has been adventuring. And then Maury has been questioning why Maury was adventuring. That's fair. That's very fair. But now Maury can adventure in the dark and stab her friends. Wait. Mm-hmm. No, that's accurate. probably cathartic. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's fair. It's Maury very will fair. never admit it. <laughs> you cast Zone of Truth, Maury will still probably not admit it. <laughs> zone of Truth is not Zone of Compelled Truth. Yes, you are correct. Or at least not Zone of Compelled Speech. That this would is require also someone to cast Zone of Truth and then someone else to cast Suggestion. Talkie talkie. <laughs> well, you don't need any of those because Maury can cast Detect Thoughts at will. Oh, that's going to be fun. That when you first met Maury, Maury believed what you were saying because Maury could read surface thoughts. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Only at will, though. That's the thing. And since we don't know anybody named Will. (laughs) Except for the boy. (laughs) Poor boy. That was a joke that I was hoping at least one person would get. I got it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So, or the traveler. But anyway. Anyway. Fire at will. No, no, no. Do not fire at will. He is my second mate. Fire at the sea dock. <laughs> the, there is an additional awkward trip back with more silence because you've run out of small talk from the first trip. You also brought more supplies. Yes. Actually, the supplies are for the cobots. They do not have food, as has already been established. Sorry, created food ahead with the correct timing so that she can get the spell slot back. By, with a long rest before we wind up having to face dragons. Also, Bog knows a lot about botany. You will not hurt for granary or fruits and vegetables. Like you, Your fiber levels are going to go through the roof. I really hope that, that dragonborn aren't obligate carnivores. They are technically not. Good. Many dragons are not obligate carnivores. In first and second edition, some of them lived off of gems. Um, you do not eat gems that I'm aware no. of. No. Sorry, or the holograms. Like no. <laughs> Thank Them you. either. Them either. As so, soon as I said that, I was like, I don't know how many of you remember this joke. No, I remember. <laughs> okay. I got it. Sorry, you might lick a gem. What about Jim, Jimmy, Jim, Jim, Jimmy, Jim, Jim? Mm-hmm. Well, that depends on how cute. <laughs> I love that this is a conversation that's taking place while you are on the rails. (laughs) So we have gotten off the rails? You have just gotten off the rails. The train has stopped. (laughs) Okay. Okay, so you've had a wipe. You've had a dissolve. A spiral? Ooh, iris. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, do an iris one. (laughs) Okay. It's a circle goes in. Is it, it opens up a little bit, and an anthropomorphic pig waves at everyone and stutters, <laughs> and then the circle closes again. We can't then, eat that. Then opens up outside a ruined building. No can, dragons moved in while we were gone, right? You can tell it's a ruined building because uh-huh. there is a dragon-shaped imprint in the top of it. Oh, wow. It might be a little Did- hard to tell it's a dragon-shaped imprint, but the dragon skeleton that's still there kind of lets you know that it's a dragon-shaped imprint. Crunch. Yeah. Wonder what happened to that one. Oh, it died. Uh huh. What killed it? Probably another dragon. They get really oh. big. Ooh, wow. They okay. get that big. You usually, only see them get killed by other dragons. Hey, long cap. Look at the yeah. bones. There was a killer bunny. Bones. <laughs> I am looking. <laughs> <laughs> long cap has ideas. <laughs> At this point, I don't think Longcap has any spell that would animate an entire dragon skeleton. I would let you animate one of the hands. <laughs> Somewhere on another wor- world, a month's travel away, a Kenku starts to freak out. <laughs> I just want to reiterate that I appreciate that the spell wording for animate dead says the corpse of a humanoid or a pile of bones and does not clarify that the bones must also be humanoid. I, as the GM, would let you animate part of this, but not the whole pile. <laughs> I have this this mental image of... A single an- wing. No, 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 no. Animate, like, one of the talons and, like, some of the wrist bone 
and then there's long kept just sort of sitting on this giant skeletal dragon thing and you know back propped against the the wrist bone the the forearm bone and having it sort of scuttle around like a walking chair <laughs> thank you for this gift you're welcome i wish i could draw it effectively i simply said a single wing because i wanted to be able to say have you the wing <laughs> i wish my sheet would load Valid. It will not. In D&D Beyond? Yeah, because I still have a D&D Beyond sheet because Foundry, not. I hope that was comprehensible. <gasps> yeah. yeah. Foundry, not, actually tells me a lot about what I needed to know for that situation, yes. <laughs> Remember, I don't know what I was going to say. Mm. Remember you have opera. Remember what you were going to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have a building. Apparently, we all have similar brain states. That's all. Yes, you have a crushed building. Uh, the door to enter the building is really smashed in, but that's okay because somebody decided to dig out an entrance below where the door used to be. Um, I was I was disconnected from the call because yes. I was playing with my sheet and it did that. Okay. Well, we haven't been on topic enough for you to have missed anything. Uh -huh. <laughs> you're in front of a crushed building crushed by a dragon that then rotted away into just a skeleton the front door of the building is smashed in beyond repair but someone dug out underneath it into a lower basement of the structure right here we are I need to um set up. I need to set up reconnaissance that is not exactly what I meant, no. Ah. Well... You did tell me, look at the bones. True. But we need to get closer to the bones, probably, before you do much with them. Oh, I thought that we were up close to them. Scratch all that, then. Oh, no, you, you, are, you can be up close to them if you want to be. When I said the roof was crushed in, it was crushed in by a full-size dragon. That's ground level now. Ah. Okay. You can walk right up to the bones if you want to. Mori has not walked up to the bones. Mori is just staring at them. Sori is going to reach and gently pat her hand. You okay? Mori is, mentally, Mori is mentally enumerating the places that she would rather be than here. Yeah, probably. I, I thought the dragon we fought was really big. Eep. This dragon was a lot bigger. Uh-huh. It was killed probably by something bigger than it. At least meaner. That means the bigger, meaner dragon is still out there. I mean, the other dragon was killed by us, and we're little. So a lot of little ones might have ganged up on it. Mori has her little healing gun out and may or may not have a white knuckle grip on it. That's why we're going to be careful. So you said I could animate a hand. You can definitely animate a dragon hand, yes. Because I am a necromancy wizard, I could animate two hands. As luck would have it, it technically has four. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Although, if you're aware... animating... Sorry, you go. I am aware that this is going to upset Mori, but also we are about to go fight a dragon, and Longcap prioritizes not dying to more dragons over... Not upsetting Mori. It, this is apropos of nothing except that I searched for for hand spells, but I found this gif and it made me laugh. Yep. <laughs> Scanlan's <laughs> hand. Apparently so named in the animation because that way they were not infringing on any D&D &D property. Therefore, they didn't need to license anything from Wizards of the Coast. Mm -hmm. So I take it that during this time, Longkep performs some kind of ritual, and then there are two skeletal, draconic hands following Longkep around? Yes. Or Aren't providing they... transportation for a Longkep? How, how big are the hands compared to Longkep? Undead thralls. I'm going to say that each hand counts as a medium-sized creature. Boy, Longkep is totally able to ride one. Yes. <laughs> Longkep has a mount. <laughs> The GM will give himself inspiration. <laughs> Valid. I mean, 
that can terrify some people, but let's be honest, I'm probably going to use it on Mori. Smallest cat has a mount. Oh. I'm not going to say that smallest kept preens. <laughs> but out of the corner of your, of your eye, you could almost swear that smallest kept is preening. Gloat, gloat, gloat. <laughs> and may or may not point forward with one skeletal hand in the direction that the other skeletal hand is traveling. There is a slight delay when direction changes because smallest kept is not actually leading the larger hand, just acting like it is. You can ho that way. No, that I. I guess this way. We we're going this way. I guess you could command it to follow the taps so that that small kept taps one direction and it turns that way. And <laughs> you could, but I suspect that this is not happening. I could. We shall wrong. see. Okay, so you have two new members of the party, and the DM has to find the stat blocks for these things. Alrighty. I am not inclined to add to the party until we I, I know we're closer to combat. Yes, these are longer term. Does it give stats in this for the undead thralls? I don't see them. Age 119? Player's Handbook? Somewhere. Um, I should have all the Player's Handbook things added in. I do a search for undead. I've got Carnathy Undead Soldier, Phil Giant Undead Groundhog, Oh, that brings back memories. A swarm of undead snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? <laughs> undead bullets. Archiving that for later. Snakes. Oh, snakes. Undead cockatrice. An undead shambling mound. Which, again, that brings back memories. There should probably be stats in there that are just skeleton. Yes. Type in skeleton, I've got giant shark skeleton, giant skeleton, minotaur skeleton, ogre skeleton, skeletal alchemist, that sounds like fun, skeletal giant owl, skeletal juggernaut, skeletal owlbear, skeletal Ooh. polar bear, skeletal swarm, skeletal two-headed owlbear. Why? Why not is a better <laughs> question. <laughs> skeleton, and guess what? I found the stats for skeleton and... Better yet, it's got the wrong picture. Oh, no. <laughs> this is definitely the wrong picture, and I must share it with you, if I can. Unfit. Piece oh, wait, no, no. Oh, when you zoom in, it is the right picture. Okay. Oh, it, all right. From a di in its small version, it looks like I'm looking at something head on. I'm not. I'm looking at something from above. Ah. Uh, that threw me off. Well, that's weird stuff. far less weird. It's just a walking skeleton. That's not weird at all. Okay, but you've got two skeletons. Do you have names for them, or is that something right we'll worry about later if they survive? Right and left? I like this plan. <laughs> <laughs> Righty and lefty. I introduced my after-school club to Ross and Jackson. Oh, how nice. They, uh, that didn't end well. Oh, no. <laughs> they won, but uh, one of them is playing an eight-year-old child. Um, the student is not an eight-year-old child. They are playing an eight-year-old yeah. child. And uh -huh. they decided after they defeated Ross, they were going to steal Ross's mm -hmm. helmet. And no one could agree on if it was kidnapping or theft. Oh, wow. <laughs> right and leaf, Uber and lift. <laughs> well, I mean, they are undead and therefore evil. <laughs> True. True. All right. So is anyone going to go into the basement? Or are we going to hang out here? No, nope, going gonna in. Send the... Going in. It, it, if Utashi's going in, then I'm going in. <laughs> All right. Um, 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 let's see. Let me just check something. Come on, come on. Where, where are you? Where are you? Is there anyone who's choosing to stay outside? Probably Maury. Maury says yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maury reluctantly stays with the party. Mori oh. has decided that splitting the party is evil and must never be done. Sorry would like to, if possible, cast a pass without trace. Is something going on? I clicked on turn on camera by mistake. Ah, uh, okay. okay. That's what I thought I saw. It should not still be on. It should be off now. No, it's gone. Oh, this is what I wanted to do. Start screen sharing trace. again. A veil of shadows and silence radiates from you, masking you and your companions from detection. 
For the duration, every creature you choose within 30 feet of you, including you, has plus 10 bonus to dexterity stealth checks and can't be tracked except by magical means. Okay, pass without a trace. On the party and the cobot protectors and 314 and cog and, you know, allies. All the allies. Oh no, my gears are freezing up. I can't hear the ticks and the talks. No, it's a spell. It makes them quiet. Oh. And on that note, we're sneaky. Mm-hmm. I am going to activate the next map. We oh. are going in. Well, you told me you are. Yep. Uh, and I need to add two skeletons. <laughs> yeah. That is not a skeleton. That's not a skeleton. <laughs> that is Way a giant sheep. <laughs> it's so fluffy, you're all going to die. Yeah, that was the true big bad. The giant sheep. <laughs> Which, by the way, sheep and skeleton both begin with S, and these monsters are listed in alphabetical order. Oh, I wish no. to point this out. Uh huh. It is rather important that you know <laughs> that they're on top of each other. There we go. Now we've got righty and lefty. Okay. <laughs> Of course, if you were fighting a giant sheep in a room filled with lava, it would probably not end well for the sheep. It would die of heat exhaustion before you even struck it. Yeah, probably. Unless it had recently been sheared. Or it was a lava sheep. One second, I need to adjust my notes. Instead of wool, you share it, and there's fire. There's also fire if you don't share it. That's kind of the point. Smash cut to the farm in Coombridge. And inside a certain barn, you see the windows are just flaring with light. And from inside, you hear, and, oh, God, why? (laughs) And this is why Zelia is not allowed to compete in the sheep races. Again. 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 (laughs) Nor is Chroma. (laughs) Chroma would make a sheep. I was just thinking that, yeah. Uh, yes, she would. Franken sheep. <laughs> There's no law that says a robotic sheep cannot race. Yet. 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 <laughs> there will be rules added after that race. <laughs> With multiple footnotes underneath for each time Chroma finds a way around the previous rule. <laughs> also, no cyborg sheep is the first one. <laughs> No sheep controlling sheep bots. Sheep. No, no sheep riding other sheep that happen to be robots. <laughs> no sheep who have tiny robots, usually referred to as nanites, in their bloodstream. No sheep that have rockets strapped to their back. No sheep on roller skates. No sheep with access to a grease gun. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> anyway. anyway. It looks kind of molten in here. Mm-hmm. It does look kind of molten. I'm going to ask Jenna to go and show me what's on the other side of these rocks. Which rocks? The ones directly in front of us that are blocking our view. It looks like I added 314 to the map twice. Whoops. 314 did not get cloned. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. Okay. Where's Cog? Was that supposed to be Cog? Um, oh, yeah. You can't see Cog because there's a wall there. Oh, okay. There I'm here. <laughs> okay. Oh, there. All right. So which rocks are we referring to, Deza? The ones directly okay, north? So, or So we're all standing in this group on this platform. Uh, to, our, to the northeast is this set of stairs leading either up or down to a platform. And bet- the the rocks are on the other side of the set of stairs. And it looks like there's actually, like, part of it is a statue, but I can't tell. Yeah, and the statue is, on this map, it's supposed to be a dwarf. But I'm going to say that it is clearly a kobold because I'm not oh, changing sure the art of the map. It's a co- statue of a kobold wearing some kind of false beard. No, just pretend no. that dwarf statue oh, okay. is a kobold statue. Okay. Anyway, from my character's perspective, the the area 
on the other side of that section of rocks and statue is blacked out, and so I want to send Jenna around to see what's okay. actually there. Well, since you can see through your familiar's eyes, I'm going to do a thing temporarily. You ready? Mm-hmm. Neat. Okay. And I'll just have her make a circuit and then come back to me. Okay. Every now and then, as Jana is flying around, Little bits of lava, like, shoot up and down, almost as if it's, like, Super Mario Brothers. Ah, Poda so, so I'm going to ask Jana to make a dexterity save. Okay. Um, that means that you're going to ask me to look up Jana's step stat block so that Jana can make a uh, well, dexterity Well, Jana is a pseudo-dragon, right? Yeah. But uh, familiar pseudo-dragons have a special stat block. I have to find yes, it. Yes, I have that. Oh, okay. Uh, so they have a dexterity, they have a plus two to dexterity saving throws. Okay. So find dice. Are we okay, offspring? Something unrelated to this game is making you laugh uncontrollably. Yes, because um, Lee sent me this about about something. Oh no! I am spending my inspiration to reroll that. No, it, oh, it's, it, it's actually, a nat one. Yeah, it's a nat one, and nah, all right, I'll make this work. <laughs> I was like, what What role could be so low that you're like, I need to spend my inspiration? Oh, well, nat one. Yes, that, that is a role. That certainly is a role. That is a role that happened. So you're not spending your inspiration? I am not spending my inspiration. Okay, your familiar disappears in a poof of flambe. That was... Maybe don't fly low here or get over the lava. Why is there so much lava in here? Lesson oh, learned. That, that helps with the processing of stuff. Right. Lesson learned. It's not just molten rock. There's a lot of metals in there, too. Burns out all the impurities. There's probably a dragon in there somewhere. Someone remind me to find you a think? rat. To find what? Someone remind me to find a rat. So that I have a present to give the next time I cast Find Familiar. Good idea. Oh, okay. Uh, you could use Find Familiar to summon a rat, then use yes, Find Familiar but rat, again. But the rat would be the same familiar. If you do it fast enough while it's looking in a mirror. <laughs> look, I gave you a rat. It's not my fault it got away. <laughs> What's that one magic item? The, the bag of many things or something like that? Bag of holding? Bag of tricks. Bag of tricks. And it's not just one magical <laughs> item. There are varieties. Is a terror. I'm sorry. I am now imagining a bag of many things. <laughs> you reach in. You pull something out. <laughs> like a Hopefully it's not the mat. That's a horrible idea. <laughs> one note. Let me uh, see. Like, like, like Bullwinkle. Hey, Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. So I have a note for <laughs> Lava Sheep. I'm going to add an additional note for Bag of Many Things. Bag of Many <laughs> Things. <laughs> Wonderful. Hey, Rocky. Uh, when I make the table for rolling on a Bag of Many Things, you know one of the items, it'll be like a 1% chance, but one of oh. the items that you can pull out will be a deck of many things. Oh, wow. Oh. Gotta be careful with that one. And then we stuff it right back in and go, nope, nope, nope. Not that, today. That or another bag of many things. <laughs> this is obviously where it you get them from. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm not going to stop and think about this too much, but I kind of want most of the, like every item on the list that can be, to be an item that is known for having extra dimensional space in it. So you can pull oh, out a God. bag of holding. You can pull out a bag of devouring. <laughs> You can pull out, like, at, at some point you pull out Monty's head and he goes, that's where it was. <laughs> You'll pull out Monty's what? Hat. Head. Hat. Oh. hat. Monty's hat oh. is a hat of holding. Right. Oh, yeah. He right. keeps all of his spell components in it. Valid. 
And Where's he will neither conform nor deny that a significant amount of his treasure is in there. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps it under his hat. <laughs> I have a head for these things. Also, dragons can hold their breath for a very long time. If necessary, he can hide in his hat. Con My you brain just you're broke. Incapacitated when you do that. No, you are incapacitated when you do that. Monty ancient... pretends that that's what he wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way to take a nap. Yeah, yeah. You just leave your nose outside the the opening, and uh, you know. <laughs> It was really weird. I saw Monty's hat just like sliding down the hallway with a <laughs> nose sticking out the front of it. <laughs> Monty, Snoring, no doubt. <laughs> Mo oh, here's what Monty does. Monty goes into the hat, then, as a dragon, is able to shapeshift into other things, like, say, maybe an elephant. So a long nose pokes out of the <laughs> hat, <laughs> and it slithers oh, down the hallway. Like a snake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, this is terrible. Now, one might say, what, what, <laughs> yes, and goes into the hall where they grow all the mushrooms um, <laughs> to badger the people who are there. Oh, you got them all. Yes. <laughs> Yahtzee. Um, now, one might say, Crash, there's no reason why someone would want to do this. There's no game mechanics advantage to this. And I say, Yes, however, Monty would certainly do this to mess with somebody. Eo, have you listened to the things that I have just suggested? Yes, but... you, you want to say you're out of it and loopy. I just suggested that a dragon grandfather sneaks down a hallway disguised as an elephant in a hat. Yes, but you didn't start the tangent. I started the tangent by talking about bags of many things. <laughs> Q, I, I fail to of... see the problem. Did it start the fire? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. but I saw that Usually and said, I, I have a can of lighter start fluid. The fire, considering the characters I play. <laughs> <laughs> So naturally, I brought Monty into this. This mm -hmm. is thematically appropriate. Right. Yep. right. So we have lava. We have yes. Lava. I lava it. Lava, lava. We need to stay on the path. Staying on the path. Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely staying on the path. Could I, could I move over here, please? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Maury trades spaces with a cobot protector which doesn't seem to understand the whole idea of requests to move, but doesn't really fight back as it is forcibly shoved towards the <laughs> lava to make space for Mori to not be towards the lava. Okay, they're smaller. Also heavier, but uh -huh. this is its life now. <laughs> Just as long as it doesn't fall in. Mm -hmm. Again. I mean, hi. <laughs> Presumably, they don't fall in easily because, I mean, they're they're made for defending these places so well not necessarily made for defending lava no but they they're defending <laughs> foundries and things well, defending, lava. defending lava does lava need defending <laughs> well we must make sure our our vital lava stores are not pillaged you there what are you doing there's a cobalt that has like a bucket of lava nothing I was just, uh, inspecting the... Oh, the bottom melted out again. Never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, you see someone who seems to be made entirely of cubes. Okay, Walking okay, slowly. I am sorry. I am sorry. I will stop. Do not be sorry. That was gold. Okay, technically it was lava. But it was a golden color. Minecraft. <laughs> For for the context for Beth, who I do not believe particularly plays Minecraft, you can put you you can use buckets to pick up lava and put lava down elsewhere. For some reason, I, a regular iron bucket is enough. I'm horrified, but sure that tracks. It's fine. Also, I do have stats for aghast. I'm very aghast. Well, you are surrounded by lava, so mm -hmm. let us. 
carefully check locations to determine where the biggest pool is that probably has a dragon that is way bigger than we want. I mean, that that's any of them, but... Dragons are good at that. Dragons are very good at being bigger than people want. Besides, Sori is, in fact, enjoying the warmth, I suspect. She, she does breathe fire once a day, if pressed. <laughs> if she goes too long without breathing fire, she starts hiccuping smoke sometimes. But, you know, that, that's how these things go. I'm very concerned about the little thing moving around on the screen. <laughs> what the heck even is that? Hey, uh, before we go any farther, do we want to take five? We <laughs> have been playing for about an hour. For some value of the word playing. I'll hit the pause button. <laughs> and we're back. And you will not know all the meaningful conversations that we had and whether or not the term snot weasel was mentioned. <laughs> oh my. I will not oh. provide context. Oh my god, Becky, you will not believe what we just talked about. <laughs> <laughs> now you see, if you had spent that inspiration, you'd have it back now. <laughs> but no, you saved it. And your familiar is sitting in the Feywild thinking, fly over the lava, she said. It'll be fine, she said. I'd rather be sailing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you are in the Cobot Forge. You're surrounded by lava. There's narrow walkways. Well, not that narrow. They're like 15 feet wide, according to how many of you are going three across. Uh, there may or may not be a pair of skeletons named Righty and Lefty, that are just <laughs> draconic hands, even though that's not what the character art shows. <laughs> and you can faintly hear the sound of... I need to stop now or Nintendo will sue me. <laughs> okay. Uh, I had a friend... That, this is way back when. Back when uh, MP3s were... Back when everybody was on dial-up. Mm. And so if you wanted to listen to video game music, you downloaded MIDIs. And I had a friend who liked Legend of Zelda music and had downloaded Legend of Zelda music and was complaining that the Death Mountain music didn't sound quite right. And I listened to it, and then I added in a beep, 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 beep to indicate low health. <laughs> and then it sounded right. <laughs> That's why it didn't sound right. You're not dying. <laughs> okay. So um, you should have full control of your characters. Who wants to do a thing? Who wants to do a thing? I would well, love to do a thing, but I'm at the back, and there are same. like you can a move dozen through, characters. <laughs> you can move through a square that's occupied by a friendly character. Okay. Hmm. So is the forge the square thing off to the side? Is that right? Uh, there's some stairs right there. It's hard to see yeah. with the... Deza, okay. before you go running off for a moment, if you, you have to stay, I think, within 30 feet to make the uh, spell work. So, oh, okay. with, What spell? Pass without a trace. Pass oh, without trace. Pass without trace. Oh, no, no, no. Each, it's, each creature you choose within 30 feet of you has a plus 10 dexterity, bonus 10 dexterity, but it's, that's at the casting of the spell. Oh, okay. So now you all have it until you do something that breaks it. Yeah, that that lasts until you you break concentration or you deliberately end the spell, or until one hour passes. Okay, I'm going to sit here in like Hi, the Chris. middle of everybody. And Hi, do you want poop? Do you want poop, Frisky? Yeah, you're not muted. <laughs> I know. I had to set my phone down so I could get out the Frisky food. Yes. So we're my What's got into that but... cat? Food, hopefully. I was briefly very angry at him today because he stole an entire quesadilla. <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Did he carry it away like a cat carries a small kitten? Oh, there he is. He, I, I walked into the kitchen to grab a knife, and when I came back, the quesadilla was gone, and he was, like, dragging it away. <laughs> Oh, no. Socket has and done I, that with I, my socks. I had to take it away from him because it had onions in it. Oh, oh yeah. no. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you denied the mighty hunter. <laughs> yes, I did. 
By the way, uh, I will well, say, because I did not the, describe... Sorry, you go. The, the Mighty Hunter denied me my lunch. Mm. Naughty. But, uh, also, the Mighty Hunter has just fallen off the back of my computer and moved my <laughs> monitors around. <laughs> The Mighty Hunter is a klutz. Oh, my. He is <laughs> meant well, to do that. I, I am unfortunately fairly certain that he has a little brain damage. Oh. Um, because you, you may remember he had a seizure in October. Right, right. Um, and so he is not the best at knowing when he's going to fall off things. Oh. Aw, little guy. Oh. <laughs> yes, this, this GIF is... <laughs> A, a a dramatic reenactment of the event, and that expression. Shape, shape, play, wiggle. Oh no! That, that, that expression <laughs> as the cat's blanket just slides off at the edge. Not like this. Not like this. He Why has done that fools? several times recently. Oh poor oh, Boo! No. Poor Boo! <laughs> anyway, describe the map. Describe the map. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not describing the map. I'm describing three one four. Ah, three one four. As you were getting ready to come here, loaded up a lot of tools and tool belts, and there may or may not be a bandolier. There is a bandolier. There may or may not be additional bandoliers covering the first bandolier. They may have, in fact, doubled their weight. In bandoliers? In tools, tool belts, etc. That is an encumbrance problem. I, I just want to be prepared. Also, I'm told that leather increases your armor class. But what do they say about cool armor? Does that I, count as chainmail or studded leather? I don't quite understand. Yeah, no, that that this is because I am being kind of out of character, but in my in-character voice. Ah, okay. Did you say cool leather? None of this is cool. It's very, very warm in here. <laughs> I'm having a very hard time with my water cooling right now. Perhaps. Rich, then grinchly. there should be perhaps we should load the giant hands with some of those tools. Oh no, I need to keep them at hand, so to speak. Well that's putting just them on the hands would keep them at hand. At my hands. Valid. You could ride on a hand. And then it would be your hand. How handy. <laughs> just no, in case you hand. need an extra helping hand. <laughs> <laughs> you have to hand it to them. Okay, I have I have moved long cap onto one of the hands, and I have moved three one four onto the other hand. In They're theory, I can handsome. select and move them both at the same time. What about the gripping hand? Uh, the we gripping have... hand is sir not appearing in this film. Right. You'll have to go to the moat for that. I do not want to go to the moat. The moat is made of lava. No, no, I different say, moat. The moat in God's my, my favorite scene in the D&D movie was the Bigby's Hand duel. I need to see that sometime. I have not I seen have the not. D&D it's, movie yet. I have not it is, seen it. The, the D&D movie is pitch perfect. It's it, they, they, at the same time, absolutely have fun with it and take it deadly seriously. Like, everybody in the movie is in the movie. It, it, in the setting that they are, it, it's wonderful. I cannot give it high enough praise. I heard it's good. I heard some complaints about the potato, but I wasn't given context because it was a spoiler-free complaint. Oh, it, I have no complaints about the potato. The pa- the potato is hilarious. I love that I still have no context, and I appreciate mm-hmm. that. Yeah. That makes it better. That makes it actually better. It's on Paramount Plus. We get that. The, okay. Wow. The The yeah. only... The only complaint I can think of about the potato is that maybe the potato is doesn't have enough mass for what it does. Well, it's probably but, a hot potato, and we're certainly hot here. Uh, I, sorry. Anyway, sorry. Anyway, uh, 314 has made a beeline for this anvil over here that you can see on the next platform at the top of these stairs. Like, ooh, I haven't seen one of these in a while. I could do all kinds of stuff with this. Um, thanks to... Jana's sacrifice. Uh, I have not gotten any danger senses from the rest of the forge, so I am uh, exploring. Oh yeah, those are anvils and not turrets. Okay, Why are, are we going turrets? 
because if you zoom far enough out on the map, they look a little like yeah, turrets. Yeah, they, they look like turrets. Like how well, I zoomed out far enough that the skeleton icons are different. turrets might have been a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we going upstairs? <laughs> Please, upstairs or downstairs? <laughs> so, I'm sorry, this conversation is completely incomprehensible from over there, isn't it? Anti-dragon turrets would be the kind of thing that most dragons, when they're exploring a new possible lair, and the realtor's there and saying, yes, the, the moat came standard at the time it was constructed, you'll notice the statues, uh, high aesthetic quality for the time period. We can update those if you wish. Uh, some of the masonry will need to be worked on. It's a bit of a fixer-upper. Yes, and the anti-dragon turrets. Well, you can pay to get those removed, I'm sure. <laughs> Even floors. So are we climbing up to where the anvils are or, or going down from? Yeah, the, that's a that's an excellent question. Are, are these, what direction do these staircases go? I'm going to say, based on how the shadows are set up, each staircase is going up. Okay. So you're getting further and further away from the lava. However, the lava is still sending little bits that go flying straight up and then straight down again. Uh, and bloop, bloop, you'll bloop. notice the glowing lines on the floor. Those are channels through which the lava is pouring, but the channels are narrow enough that you can step over them without any difficulty. I will not even say it's difficult terrain. I, uh, I think I found the main thing. The main thing? It's a giant dragon head with lava coming out of it. Ooh. I like how when I click on a character, I get to see what they see. Mm -hmm. I do not like that when all my NPCs are in the blind spot of that character, I can't click on my NPCs to see the whole map again. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> what have you done? Oops. <laughs> now, you are. would think that Deza, with 120 freaking feet of dark vision, would reveal most of the map. Yes, but there was a shadow. Oh. All of my NPCs, except for one, were in the shadow. <laughs> Oops. I think you could probably click on the um, the actors tab and maybe click on it from there. There's there's ways around it. There but... are ways around it. However, it doesn't forego that one moment of panic of where are my NPCs? <laughs> where did my NPCs go? Oh no, the dragon head isn't the main thing. It's a thing to be sure, but that's um. That that's uh that's actually just there for show. It's an aesthetics choice. Okay. Now this over a, here. I'm gonna cast detect magic on it just to be sure. Frisky, why is your tail jerked? You detect a cat. Uh -huh. Somehow. <laughs> okay. So here's the thing about cobots. Actually, they aren't actually magical. Some of the tools used to make them originally had magic involved. But at this point, they are self-replicating using technology alone. So there's no magic involved. There is magic in Cog, because Cog is not a cobot. Cog is a soul trapped in a soul gem embedded in a clockwork monstrosity. So Cog glows. But none of the items here are glowing. Well, that's good to know. Now, this anvil over here, this is a, again, aesthetically, it's an anvil. But actually, this is the kind of thing that allows me to make micro adjustments in small bits of alloy and silicon to a, it, nanites. It makes nanites. Neat. Is yeah. that going to, is it still functional? Um, it's a bit of a fixer upper. I'll need to make some adjustments. But lucky for me, I'm lousy with nanites. I'm full of them. Well, we that should probably do a bird landing on my headset. <laughs> on Did top hear. of it. Aww. I'm giving her little pieces of cracker to eat, so she came over. Valid. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, we should probably Oops. do whatever will make this our defenses better because um Cog did say they thought there was a red dragon living here. There was a red dragon here. I saw it. it what? Was, it was yeah. big. It had wings. And it breathed fire, and it went. Rah, 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 rah. Yeah. Perhaps it is either currently out, or it is currently in the moat. We could have chased it away. I doubt it. 
That, by the way, was 314. I doubt we've chased it away just by showing up because we are kind of, at the moment, fairly sneaky. So this um, this railway track up here that leads led to what looks like rubble, is that actual rubble? Yes, that's actual rubble. Okay, so the, the something has collapsed on the track. Yes. Um, okay. 314, as they're investigating, the anvils they found first were just regular anvils. It's kind of hard to have an anvil just break down. You can do it, but it's uh-huh. just a big lump of metal. And blacksmiths everywhere make angry faces at me when I say that. The parts of... It's a specialized big lump of metal. Yes. <laughs> but they still don't want you to word it that way. The parts in here that are more specialized in their tasks that aren't just about making the lava churn have either been damaged by some type of strike or just over time and lack of maintenance have worn down. But 314, as they're investigating, thinks that everything that's here is serviceable. Give them some time. They can get this whole place up and running. Can you activate the defenses? Um, what defenses? We are the defenses. Well, the projectors are the defenses. The projectors? The yeah, protectors. The protector. Protectors, yes. Yeah, the, the sword arm guys. Yeah, I like them. I like them a lot because I am small and much softer than they are. So this is clearly a living area. Is there anything here of note? Uh, to, to be clear, is there anything here of note to a historian? Well, there's a few piles of ash that look like at one point they were books. The greatest tragedy I have ever experienced. More tragic than the murals? I was just thinking that. Yes, more tragic than the murals. Because it's right here and the murals are, are further back. No, because the murals can possibly be reconstructed and also they were my fault. And so it's not a tragedy, it's an accident. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like the reasoning. The reasoning is sound. Um, is it? This looks like a bed, seat, and dresser. Am I misinterpreting? I am going to say, sure, it is. All three of them are made out of stone. Is there anything in the dresser? The dresser effectively worked as a charcoal burner. Everything in it that was made out of organic material has, in fact, been carbonized. Though it's still there if you want something that is made entirely of pure carbon. Gotcha. Piles of ash everywhere. Don't sneeze. it, it, It has... It has been thousands of years. I just thought maybe I'd get lucky. And somebody wrote their notes on, you know, metal they wrote their, tungsten. They wrote their notes on gold tablets, which then melted in the heat. That's what it's afraid of. Press the digitation. Press the digitation. Press the digitation. You successfully make all the ash disappear. No. <laughs> um, sorry. Yeah. You said you liked those protectors? Yeah. Okay, well, they've been patrolling around, and mm-hmm. it looks like you're at a good spot to watch them patrolling around. Mm-hmm. Stump, and you're in stump, a good stump, spot stump, to see stump, a large stump, stump. draconic head pop up out oh. of the lava. That's what I was afraid of. And breathe fire. Because they're all in a row. Well, they happen to be patrolling. And no one taught them how to patrol not all in a row. Ah, oh, crud. It, it's quite possible that 314 decided that they should patrol in a row because it was efficient. Oh, oh, I hope they have hit points. Oh, this is nice. Oh, no. I click use breath weapon, and it gives me a cone to place down. (laughs) You know what's not nice? Sorry's in the cone. Sorry's in the cone. Sorry will be extremely peeved, but also it's fire. Sorry is fire resistant. (laughs) Sorry takes half from fire, if I recall correctly. Yes, she has defense because she is a small dragonborn. She has resistance to fire, not immunity. Okay, this I is sure a immunity. dexterity saving throw. Going to drop a dex on me? Yes. Wait, what? I requested a dexterity saving throw roll. <laughs> okay, sorry, you made the save with a 17. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm doing a roll? Uh, You don't have to because you are not in line of sight for okay. this particular attack. Sorry, the red dragon showed up <laughs> while you were AFK. Yes. So what? The red dragon showed up. Oh, okay. There it is. All right. 
That is 54 points of fire damage for everyone who does not make their save, but that would be 27 Shh. points of damage for everyone who did. Okay. So 27, and that's just me. Not Somebody you. math yeah. that for it's, me. You don't I'm have to, Jen, you don't have don't to math it because you, got it. you weren't in the range. Got it. Sorry's so, the only player character who got hit. Um, and I have um, fire resistance, so... So it's actually half of 27 rounded down. Nine. Uh, 13. So 13. Okay. Let's see. Current hit points. How did I... I have to math to make current hit points. Okay, I'm doing my hip current hit points over on, on Beyond. What's your current, what's your current hit points? What, what, what's they your were 22. They were 22. Now it's 9. Your your maximum hit points is 22? That's what it says. That's not you right. haven't been You haven't been updating your hit points. I guess not. Yeah, your hit points should be higher than that. Way higher than that. Yeah, you're. I told it to level, and it's not. It didn't do the oh, because thing. You have it. You have it. You have it set manually. Oh, well, what uh, are they supposed to be? You're a Give cleric, a so you get you get d8s. So it, at level six, you should be forty-eight plus forty-eight plus six is fifty-four. And it's HP, so um. Total possible fifty four. Okay, let make it work. Are you, actually, wait. Our clerics. No, wrong. D eight. Yes. Kit dice. Total says possible HP or fifty four. And my house rule is you're always your total possible for hit okay. points. Okay. So I need to do because it's going to apply the hit points. So yeah, that'll be fifty four. Okay. So I need to change my max here. Do you have a configure I'm, hit I'm, points? I'm, I'm trying to figure out how you got to 22. Probably because I haven't done them since I was level one. Yeah, but there isn't a combination of your constitution and D8s that will get you to 22. Um, D&D Beyond, I don't know. <laughs> I just know what it said. <laughs> Do you have a feat that gives you... Uh -huh. I will say we don't need to reverse engineer why it was low. We know yeah. what it should be. Yeah, it should be 54. Okay. The Cobot Protectors, none of them are destroyed, but some of them are far worse for wear than others. One of them made their save. No, we do make my hit points configure. Oh. Oh. Sorry, probably does a yelp of ouch, rude, intraconic, and kind of figures that everyone is going to can figure out where the... the um, oh, that's right. Figures everyone else can figure out where all the fire came from. I mean, there's a pretty good guess. Yeah, but she did yelp, ouch, and rude. Um, this is the only time that I'm going to be able to do this, so I'm going to do it. Uh-oh. Uh, I have been given a perfect opportunity. I am going to run up onto the chair, jump off the back of the chair, and turn on flying. <laughs> Zoom. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Deza. It does not collide with a wall. I'm flying. So if we see Deza flying, does this mean it's Deza view? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Actually, let me revise. What's that in the sky? It's a weird dog. It's a talking lizard. It's a history teacher. <laughs> we are not weird dogs. <laughs> well, yes, and Superman isn't a bird. True. I stand or by my statement. Mm. True. I am thinking out what I'm going to say. We're going to have to roll initiative soon. We are. Maybe. Probably. Unless we talk real fast. Talk fast, Deza. Talk fast. Mm -hmm. Talking fast might require you to roll initiative sooner. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It depends on whether the persuasion check got made in by enough. Talking past needs you to roll initiative sooner because uh, it's to determine how fast you are. Use your dexterity bonus for talking. Mm -hmm. Actually, would you use your dexterity bonus for talking fast or for enunciating properly while you talk fast? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Anyway, thank you for talking stalling. about ridiculous thing. Stalling. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello. My name is Deza Stonetail, and as a kobold, I claim ancestral right over this world and this place. My heritage 
gives me absolute domain over the world that we have created, and I will grant you leave to stay here if you will allow us to do your work. You're trying to intimidate a dragon. Okay. I'll say that intimidation roll. You are flying right above a cobot protector, so I keep clicking on the cobot protector to request a roll. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. I'll fly over here. <laughs> Could you move a little bit to the right so I can click? Yeah. <laughs> the, the giant red dragon says, Could you move a little bit over to the right? Thank you. <laughs> no. This does not take place. I, it is not a mistake that I have moved myself away from. If the dragon breathes fire at me, the cone will not hit anybody else except the protectors. <laughs> okay, let's see. Modifiers. Disadvantage because dragon. Intimidation. All right. The highest roll was a 10. Uh, the dragon edges forward. I do not measure 10 feet, except that I do. It plops its claws down on either side of the cobot protector that's right there. It doesn't let me move it half a distance without doing a lot of menu stuff that I'm not going to bother doing right now. And says, Your ancestry. My ancestry stems from the dragons that chased your kind from this world. You will leave, and I will grant you your lives. And that's where we're going to end it for tonight. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, everyone, for playing. <laughs> My name is Crash, and I was joined by a bunch of awesome people, including Beth, Ellie, Eo, and Jen. Who wants to plug a thing? mom writes books elizabeth-mccoy.com and furthermore um i just got through making the covers bigger on some of my works that were a perfectly good size when i made the cover originally but now no we have to have enough detail to zoom in on the sistine blessed chapel uh, I, I know i know what you it. mean but in my head canon i'm imagining Coming home with a book from the library by Elizabeth <laughs> McCoy. And the book cover is three by four feet. <laughs> I open it and there's normal sized pages inside. I swear it feels like that to me, honestly. It's like what what are you looking at? Are you are you looking at my cover in an IMAX? What? Is this an IMAX theater IMAX theater? Why, why are you looking at my cover in that teeth? Why are you zooming? Why? I tried enjoying <laughs> the cover, but I started getting neck strain. Uh-huh. They're, they're not looking at your cover in an IMAX theater. They're, they're looking at your cover on multiple IMAX. That too. Uh, like, uh, as an IMAX. array. Yeah, Look, I, it, I like think. the Bondi Blue iMac. It just so happens that 640 by 480 is a perfectly acceptable resolution. I just have to stack them to see certain things these days. <laughs> well, I dug up ancient stuff off of a Mac that had died, but fortunately there was a backup. And I cried about apparently the corrupt or, or dead files that were probably made as a Photoshop that was just too old to be read or something. And Pixelmator Pro, this is an advertisement for Pixelmator Pro, took my high quality JPEG and I expanded it and it did not produce pixelation in the title. And I am just so relieved because I didn't want to have to redo that picture because I did it myself and, and I didn't have big number, a big version of it. So anyway, I made a lot of covers and please appreciate them at anywhere. Good legit eBooks e are sold and hopefully a few more of those because now it will be shipped to a few more uh, distributors. Elizabeth-McCoy.com. And speaking of books. Thank you. Um, my website is Book of Jen. It's got a lot of Diablo stuff on there right now. Um, and other games that are probably not as interesting to people who play Diablo games. But I like them. Um, I've got some book reviews at the top. I I mean to keep adding to them. But um, it I, I tend to forget. <laughs> but I'm trying. And um, it's got... Just a whole bunch of other stuff. I've been doing some long form things about um, politics generally. And uh, 
<laughs> that kind of thing on Book of Jen. There's also videos of my Diablo games in there somewhere. So that's bookofgen.net. I'm also the host of the Shattered Soulstone podcast where I talk about all of the Diablo things and whatever's going on with the company that makes them. And that's at shatteredsoulstone.com. New episodes come out every Saturday. I like that you talk about Diablo, where the mm -hmm. world is on fire, and you talk about Blizzard Activision, where everything's mm -hmm. on fire. Well, not everything. The um, European Union decided to uh, approve of the Microsoft uh, acquisition of Activision Blizzard. This does not mean that Microsoft is now free to do what they want with, you know, and all of this. There's a few other regulators that are not so happy, but at least oh, that yeah. was something good. Uh, Great Britain. It's not happy. Yes, Great Britain is not yeah. happy, and the United States is not happy either. So, so EU says no. Well, it says yes. It says yes. Great mm -hmm. Britain says no. Mm -hmm. um, I was watching Chris's podcast, the Coast to Coast oh. Expanded Universe, today mm -hmm. when they were live. They mm -hmm. were talking about this, and for context, those of you who might not know, Chris is very Scottish. Yes. As in, he lives in Scotland. Right. Has the <laughs> um, accent and everything. Yes. Uh -huh. And... My comment in the chat at the time was, is this the thing that's going to take Scotland from 49% to 51%? <laughs> oh my. There was a consensus that it just might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'd be nice for Chris. the world to have a free Scotland, you know? Right. Yeah, I miss Chris. Yeah. That's, that's one of the reasons why I enjoy hanging out. It, he's not in every show, because... He is right. still very busy, so he doesn't right. get to hang out in each of their shows, which is every other week. Right. And he still doesn't always make it. And speaking of podcasts, because someone was somewhere. I don't know who, but when uh -huh. I find them, <laughs> I will tell them about our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Coggle Gaming. Help us keep the lights on, along with other illustrious patrons, including Chris, who we were just speaking of, Ellie, Eric, Shen Shen, Walter, and patron emeritus, Cindy. So until next time, this is Crash saying, Actually, before you go, there's a small problem with the shower. Any of you know anything about plumbing? <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night. Bye.